Okay, I am informed that we're live. Um, I can't actually watch the stream on my computer or we get like some weird feedback. So this is gonna be a little odd. This is a new format for me because normally I'm either talking to someone or just like giving a lecture, but now I feel like I'm talking to a chat room and staring at my camera. So it's a little strange. So I hope everyone kind of bears with me. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Django Wexler. I'm a fantasy author here in Seattle in the United States. Um, I'm the author of The Thousand Names, uh, which is a military fantasy, and uh, The Forbidden Library, which is a middle grade fantasy. Um, I see that I'm live from the chat room here. If I look down, it's because I'm looking at the computer here. So this is a little strange for me. So everybody say hello in the chat room, and you can shout out uh, questions. Um, I will try to go through the questions in like chronological order and we'll see how many we can get through before my voice gives out or something like that. Um, okay, so here we go on questions. It's great to be here by the way. Thank you to Campus Society and to Jen for setting this up. Um, all right, and uh, you know feel free to ask whatever you guys want. Um, you know, if, if, it, if it's something I feel like I can't answer then I'll just uh, you know, hide in the corner. Um, okay, I gotta scroll up in this to not, uh, so that I can see. Okay, uh, Rashid asks, uh, what was the feeling like when your first book was published? Um, it's pretty good. I can't deny that. Uh, you know, it's it it's a very long process. It takes forever. Uh, when Thousand Names came out, I think it was probably. 18 months from the point at which I submitted it to the point at which it actually like came out and so it feels like you're just like finally like you go to the store and you're like whoa this book is actually here after spending so long kind of working on it as like this imaginary thing uh, it's like real um, so that's a little weird uh, but in, in a good way um, let's see Jay asks uh, what writers would you say are your main inspirations for your writing style? Um, it depends on the book. Uh, for The Thousand Names, which was my first book, um, which has now led to a series of five books. The fifth one comes out in January uh, in the UK. It's from Head of Zeus, so I encourage everybody to check that out. Um, that's kind of the main thing I've been doing. Uh, and the biggest influences were probably George R. R. Martin and um, S.M. Sterling, Steve Sterling. Uh, in particular, I read George Martin's books, and I really liked the way he brought uh, he brought sort of a Knights and Castles fantasy back to its more historical roots, and that kind of I really wanted to do that, but with a different period. So I ended up in the Napoleonic Wars after reading a book by David Chandler called The Campaigns of Napoleon, which is fantastic, and I thought this would make a great story. So that was like the closest, like, direct inspiration, although, of course, I've read a million, billion books. Um, I also have to, uh, Steve Sterling and David Drake wrote a series called The General, uh, which I really like. It's basically a retelling of the Campaigns of Belisarius um, in a sci-fi context, and I really like that idea. Scrolling down a little. Uh, how long did it take you to write your first book? Um, it's a tricky question because I was writing books long before I was published. I wrote probably 10 books before I was published. I wrote fan fiction for a while. I wrote just books that I knew weren't good enough to be published. Um, and the time varied a lot depending on whether I got stuck or what other things were going on in my life. When I was in college, I had a little more time. Uh, when I started working full-time, it was a little less. Um, the, the Thousand Names, which is my first published book, took me about nine months probably to write. Um, I was writing, I had a, my schedule blocked out for about an hour a day in the morning before going to work, and then I would go into work. I worked at Microsoft uh, here in Redmond. Um, and so I'd get up at 7 and I'd, you know, write from 7.30 to 8.30 and then I'd go off to work. And so about nine months at that pace and then a little bit longer to edit it. Um, and then, of course, you know, after we sold it, then there were more edits with my editors and so on. Um, I've gotten that down pretty significantly because I'm now writing full time for the last five years. And so, like, the fifth Shadow Campaigns book, which I wrote earlier this year, took about three or four months of full time work. Um, but that was pretty fast for me. Uh, once you get to the fifth book, everything's pretty well planned. So it's kind of like 
kind of know what I'm doing. Um, let's see. Still scrolling down. Favorite nonfiction I've ever read. That's tough. Um, I really like economics and economic history, so I recommend, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but Liaquat Ahmed's um, Lords of Finance, which is about central banking in uh, after World War One, and kind of explains the Great Depression, and is just so entertainingly written. Um, if you like the military stuff, I recommend Chandler's Campaigns of Napoleon. It's one of these like giant tomes, but Chandler's such a good writer, it doesn't really feel like it. Um, so that's good. Um, Robert Massey also writes some really good history. He wrote a book called Dreadnought, which was about the first arms race between Germany and uh, Britain before World War One, the, the battleship race, and that it's really good. And and his sequel, Castles of Steel, which is about uh, World War One naval action, is also really good. He's a good writer. And basically anything by Robert Massey. Um, also, Adrian Goldsworthy writes really good ancient history, so he's done a whole bunch of stuff on Rome that I really liked a lot. Uh, what is your favorite character you've written? Oh, I don't know if I can choose that one. It's like asking someone to choose their favorite children. Like, I love all characters in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, Jen asks, how do you stay focused when writing a book? Do you, are there some stories you lose interest in writing? I mean, it's hard. It helps to think of it as a job, which is weird, because normally when you think of something as a job, it makes it kind of suck. But, like, you know, you can't... You get up, and some days you just don't feel like doing it, and you do it anyway, is basically what it comes down to. Just like if you were a plumber or a computer programmer or whatever, you know, you get up and you're like, oh, I really don't want to go to work today. And then you do, um, because that's, you know, what it takes to actually be professional. So it's, you know, it's just a matter of sticking to it. And there's always this worry that, like, oh, man, if I just kind of grind it out, is the result going to be any good? Like, is it going to be good as, as art, as a book? And the answer I found is usually yes. You know, when I'm writing, I have good days and I have bad days. But, like, when I go back and read the book, I can't tell which was which. Um, my subjective impression at the time that I'm reading is very unreliable, or rather at the time that I'm writing is very unreliable. Um, so knowing that and keeping that in the back of my mind always helps. Um, Polly says, what would you suggest as tips for someone writing their first book? I personally find I have a plan, but I'm nervous to actually start the first chapter. Um, that's hard. I mean, putting, putting, pen to paper or computer keyboard or whatever we call it these days is uh, is always hard and there's no way to get around that. Um, the answer is you just have to do it. Um, if it helps, try to remind yourself that your first book is probably not going to be great. Um, I don't. People have this weird idea that, you know, because writing, you know, you can revise it, that you're going to get it perfect the first time and it never, ever works that way. Um, you know, just think of it as like, you know, if you're a painter and you do a painting, no one's going to expect their very first painting to be like a great masterpiece. So think of it as a learning process. The only way to get there is to just write a lot over and over and over again. Um, Anushka writes, what does writing full-time entail and is it tough? Um, that just basically means I don't have like an actual job anymore, like a day job. I used to work at Microsoft. I have a degree in computer science. Um, and so I just thought I was going to be a computer programmer for a living. Um, and so I went... Um, you know, I went and did that for 10 or 15 years. Um, and then at some point I was making enough write, uh, money writing that I could be like, well, I'm going to quit this job and just live on that. Um, and it's great. You know, if, if, you know, getting there is hard and I feel really lucky to be able to do it. It's really not common. And, you know, it, it helps that, you know, it depends where you are in your life. I don't have kids, so things are a little cheaper for me. But like, you know, I'm lucky to be to be in this position. So I try to take advantage of it. So for me, it usually means I spend I don't know two to four hours a day doing writing, and then probably a bit more doing sort of writing adjacent stuff like publicity, like this, or like emails, or setting things up for future stuff. Um, so it's a pretty good job, you know, as jobs go. I like it. Um, let's see, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? It's tough. I started writing when I was in my teens. 
reasons. Um, first, I was a, a gamer. I was a Dungeons and Dragons GM, like enormously. I was a, I was and am a total nerd. But like when I uh, when I was a kid, I was like a super turbo nerd. It was crazy. Um, and then I started writing um, because it was more satisfying. Uh, but I didn't have an idea that I wanted to be like a writer, like capital W writer. Um, probably until maybe the last couple years of college where I was like, I'm at least going to try and sell stuff and make some money at this. Um, so about that. So by the time I realized I wanted to be a writer, you know, I'd been writing for years and years. Um, am I a Seahawks fan? You know, I guess nominally, excuse me. Um, I don't really follow football, though. I mean, if I was going to root for a team, it would it would be my hometown team. But like, I'm not I'm not an American football guy. I'm not really a sports guy in general. And my family that was always my brother. He's he's the sports guy. Um, but uh, we do I understand have a a soccer slash your guys's football team here in Seattle, and we're uh, that's that's quite good and very popular. You see their their posters everywhere, and we're like one of the few American cities that actually does. Um, I'd like to know my, uh, Jen asks, would like to know my thoughts on automation and AI. Um, can, I used to work on AI. Um, that's a very long and complicated topic. My, my like 30 second advice is take anything with a grain of salt because AI is really, really hard. Um, and so it's easy to do things in a limited domain. Like I'm really impressed with what they're doing with Go because I play Go and it's it's hard and it's traditionally been hard for AI and now they're they're doing really well at it. But um, general purpose AI is really hard and we're not going to get there for like a long time. <laughs> um, let's see. How many hours of writing went into your latest book? I'd go with, I don't know, maybe... I'm calculating um, three or four hundred probably. Um, you know, I my my last book um, or the book that's coming out in January, uh, the Infernal Battalion, is about two hundred thousand words, and I usually write about a th um, a thousand words in an hour. So, uh, and then there's probably as much again in editing and revision and other stuff like that. Um, let's see, Jay asks, uh, is it difficult after a certain point to edit your own work? Um, yes, the answer to that is 100% yes. Uh, a good editor is kind of worth his or her weight in gold, um, and the same goes for just like beta readers, like friends of mine who, um, who just read my work and give me feedback. Um, copy editors, the publisher has copy editors and they they set things up. Um, uh, so the answer is you have to at some point get outside feedback because as you say, the, the work exists so much in your head that you can't even see the, the words on the paper anymore. Um, there's all kinds of tricks like I tend to print things out and then kind of read them aloud because it helps me actually read what's on the page instead of the like perfect version that's in my head. But it's it's really hard. Um, so there's no substitute for like a good editor to give you feedback. Um, Jen asks, how much do you write that doesn't go into a book? Uh, do you write stories about characters to try to flesh them out a little bit? I would say a lot of that stuff I don't actually write down. Um, I have it in my head for the most part. So I think about these things a lot. I think about characters, and I think about what their lives are like. Sometimes I take notes to remind myself later. I usually don't write all that stuff out as like a fully fleshed out story. Um, it's more just kind of backstory. Um, I have done some short fiction um, to go with uh, my, my novel. So like if you look on Amazon for... Um, the Penitent Damned is a, a short story that is uh, kind of a prequel to my series, and you can get it for, I think, like, you know, 99 cents or 
whatever the equivalent is in, in the UK. Um, so that's a good thing to check out if you're if you're sort of curious as to what that's like. Um, but uh, and I've done a few for anthologies. Um, I have stories, and you know sometimes they come and ask me, you know, hey, can you write us a story about you know assassins and rogues? And so I wrote this story that went into the an anthology called Black Guards, which was a lot of fun. Let's see. Clara asks, do people you know serve as inspiration for your characters? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, the answer is like not too directly, I would say. Um, I, there's not a character who's like, oh yeah, that's Bob from my writing group. Like, I'd, I'd worry a little what happens when the book comes out and Bob is like, uh, Django, why did you do that? Um, but uh, I would say it's like you combine little bits and pieces of people. You get like a, like a, you know, a, a person's, you know, verbal tick here and another person sort of the way they react to a situation there. And also just people from fiction. Like, you know, I'm always seeing characters and I'm like, I mean, I'd love to do a relationship the way those two characters have their relationship. You know, that kind of thing. Um, let's see. Neil asks, uh, who is your favorite author and why? Oh, man, that's a hard question. Um... I can't really say I have a single favorite because, man, there are too many good authors. Um, as I said, I really liked George R. R. Martin's books. Um, I hope he finishes them someday. Uh, that would be great. Um, I'm a huge fan of Terry Pratchett. Um, his, his books are wonderful, and uh, those were things that I read when I was a kid, and you know, I think I've read every single one of those books multiple times. Um, I like Joe Abercrombie's books a lot. Um, if you're in the sort of grim dark mode, he, you know, his first law series is wonderful. His YA series is wonderful also, and doesn't have, isn't quite as dark, I guess. Although maybe it's still a little, it's still pretty dark. Um, I'm probably leaving out dozens of people. Um, on the sci-fi side, I really like Peter Hamilton's books. His um, his Commonwealth series the, the and the Void trilogy are both really good. His book, The Great North Road, is really good. Um, so, uh, you know, it's all, all over the place. Tom asks, how do you overcome writer's block? It's kind of a cop-out, but I say that I don't, like, really believe in writer's block. To me, it's kind of associated... constantly talking leaves me a little dry. So writer's block, I feel like, is associated with this idea of writing where you're like, I have to wait for the muse to strike me, and, you know, it's all high art. And it's like, that's not... It's hard to do writing that way. Maybe you can do poetry that way or short fiction, but when it comes to a novel, there's just so much work involved that you're not always going to feel like you want to do it, right? You're not always going to be at a point where... You're like, oh man, I'm excited to do it. So you just have to, you know, sit down and do it. It, it feels like do other professions get blocked? Do you know electricians get electrician block? I'm not sure it works that way. Um, so yeah, I mean the answer is sometimes it it sucks and you do it anyway. Um, <clears throat> what is uh, your favorite book to movie adaptation? Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, The Lord of the Rings is hard to top. You know, Peter Jackson had such a love for that material. Um, it was clearly a passion project for him, and it's so rare that a project like that gets, you know, the millions and millions of dollars that it takes to actually become real. Um, you know, that, that might have to be it. Um, you know, uh, there are there are others. Um, on TV, there are a few good ones. You know, I'm watching um, the American Gods adaptation right now, and it's pretty good. I'm really excited about that, um, and I'm glad they're doing more seasons. Um, I know with movies, it would be easier to list the bad adaptations, frankly, than the good ones. It's, it's hard to translate um, a book to a movie. I do love the Game of Thrones TV show, um, you know, not to harp on the George R. R. Martin theme, but but it's pretty great. You know, it has its ups and downs like any TV show, but I love it. 
I don't know. I Jen asked what the bad ones are, but I'm not sure I can talk. You know, I try to maintain in public an attitude of like not, you know, saying bad things about people because you never know who you're gonna work with, and yeah, it's it's hard. Um, there are some only a few things that I'm willing to say bad things about in public, like maybe the first three Star Wars movies that I didn't like, the the prequels, um, or the the second two Matrix movies. I'm willing to come out and say that those were terrible. Um, Polly says, I need a shirt that says the book was better on it. Yeah, I think that probably exists. The, the internet being what it is, I feel like almost any uh, t-shirt that you can possibly imagine exists somewhere. Just like type it into Google. It'll be fine. Uh, all right. Let's see, there were a couple more questions in the comments for this post here, so let me go look at that. What's going on? What am I reading at the moment? Oh, well, Tom asks if Django Wexler is my real name, and the answer is yes. Um, I'm named after a jazz guitarist named Django Reinhardt from the 30s and 40s, uh, and he... Um, my mom read about him and really liked the name, and so I have it. Um, so, you know, I, I get people telling me a lot like, oh, you know, you gotta, you have the best pen name. And I'm like, it's not a pen name, but so you can thank my parents, I guess. I didn't really pick it. Um, what am I reading at the moment? Uh, I just finished a book called The Grey Bastards um, by Jonathan French, which is really good. Um, it was self-published, and I think it's coming out officially or not officially, but from a from a Big Five publisher sometime next year. Um, and it's about half-orcs on giant hogs defending a human kingdom against orcs. It's, it's really good. I just started a book called The Tethered Mage, which I'm enjoying um, quite a bit. Um, that's, that's new. I have, like, a huge stack um, of books. You can't really... Here, I'm going to turn the camera. So if you... If we look... This way, we can probably see my miniatures painting area, and then behind that is the giant stack of books to read. Um, so, you know, I pick pick one off the, the top. Um, I've got the new Philip Pullman book, which I'm I'm excited to be seeing. Um, do I like the film Django Unchained? Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, definitely people know how to pronounce my name now, which is good. Sometimes I get people asking me if I'm named after the movie, and I'm like, how old do you think I am? <laughs> like, 10? Um, and someone asked, am I doing NaNoWriMo? And the answer is, like, not officially, um, but I probably will be starting a new book, actually, soon, so... You know, if I could get 50,000 words in a month, I'd be pretty happy. You know, that so so that seems like it'd be a good it'd be a good goal anyway. Let's see. All right, I think I've reached the bottom of the chat. Man, that was fast. Or have we stopped updating? Someone say something so I can make sure this is still working. <laughs> this is such a weird format. I feel like people should be talking back to me, but they're they're kind of not Thank you, Jen. Um, are there any films coming out soon that you're excited for? Well, Star Wars, obviously. I'm super into Star Wars. Um, and so I'm really hoping that the new Star Wars movie is good. I really liked Force Awakens. Um, that comes out in December, the new Star Wars movie. Um, I'm probably going to go see the new Thor movie this weekend, which I think is like already out in the UK, because people, my UK friends have been telling me that they've seen it already and liked it. So... Um, I'm excited to go see that. Um, you know, I'm kind of not excited for the Justice League movie, because I think it's going to be bad. Um, I'll probably see it anyway. Um, I mean, Wonder Woman was really good, but that member Superman was really bad, so maybe, maybe I'm not super excited for that. Um, uh, Rashid asks if I've ever been to London. The answer is, uh, yes. Um, I... I went when I was a kid, just very briefly, but more recently, um, a couple of years ago, you guys had the World Science Fiction Convention, Worldcon in London, and I came out for that, which was great. Um, my editor at Delray kind of met up with me and, and helped guide me around the city and helped me not get killed at traffic crossings, which is always a, a difficulty for Americans. Um, 
and then I sort of had a mix between sort of London touristy stuff and, um, you know, the con, which was out at the Excel Center. That was a ton of fun. That's probably, Worldcon is in different cities all over the place. Um, that one, but the two that I've been to that have been outside the U.S., which are that one and uh, this year's, which was in Finland, have probably been my favorites to attend. Um, so I like those a lot. Um, but yeah, London was a was a ton of fun, and I would love to come back. Um, Tom says, how did you first get published? Um, I had a, a book with a small press, which I just, you know, I have, I had a book, I mean, now it's probably a website, I mean, I know it's a website, actually, um, called Writer's Market, but back in the day, in 2003, it was just a book, like a big, thick book of, and it's like a list of agents and publishers. <clears throat> and so I went through and I made a list of all the people who I thought would like my book, and then I sent them queries, uh, which is like a letter plus some sample pages. They have like a, uh, requirements that say, here, this is what to send us. And one of them said, oh, we want to publish your book. And that was great. Um, you know, it didn't, didn't pay very well because it was a small press, but it, you know, we got my book on bookstore shelves, which was kind of exciting. Um, and then when I, you know, that was around, God, 2004, 2005. Um, and then I put that on hold for a while. And then after I moved out here to Seattle, uh, I kind of got back into it. Um, and so then I needed a literary agent because you basically need a literary agent to sell to the big five publishers, which in, in the U S are the, all the big publishers are in New York. So it's the New York publishers. Um, and so I did basically the same thing, although now, of course, it's on the internet. So I went to a website called agentquery.com, and they have just a list of all the agents. And I made a list of about 50 that I thought might like my work, and I sent them all queries. And I think of the 50, maybe two of them liked me, but it only takes one. So um, I got my agent, whose name is Seth Fishman, and he's amazing, and he sold the book almost immediately. Um, and that that's how I kind of got started. Um... Let's see, what does my family think of my writing? They're actually super pleased with it. Like, everyone has been very supportive and encouraging, which is great. Um, I have kind of a, my family has a history of, like, like weird career choices and pursuits. Like, my dad, for example, was, has been in his life a math teacher, a opera singer, he sang at City Opera in New York, and then a computer programmer, and then a bank executive. Um, and so... You know, going from computer programming to creative writing is like small potatoes by by comparison, um, and so they've all been super good about it. Um, and uh, yeah, I you know everything's been great. Um, let's see, tea or coffee? I hate coffee, so it's got to be tea. I'm not really a huge tea person. Um, I. Uh, for honestly, it's mostly like Diet Coke. I can't, I can't lie. That's where I get my caffeine um, these days. Um, pineapple on pizza. Oh no, wait, sorry. Poe or Lovecraft? I would say, if we're talking about the actual work, I would say Poe. Like I love Poe, especially the poetry. Like the Raven is amazing. Um, Lovecraft has created this universe that has produced a ton of cool stuff. Um, there's all kinds of great Lovecraftian stuff, like Charlie Strauss writes The Laundry Files, which are these great sort of spy Lovecraft books, which are just wonderful, um, and I recommend. Uh, but, like, actual H.P. Lovecraft is pretty hard to read and also, like, super racist and sexist, which makes it a little awkward now. Um, so I would say I love the Lovecraft universe, but I honestly can't recommend actually going out and reading H.P. Lovecraft. Um, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? No, for me. I like basically meat on pizza. So if we have, like, pepperoni and bacon, that'd be my pizza. Or, um... Actually, the pizza place near me does a ricotta and meatball pizza, which is amazing. Had that yesterday. Um, I like to read economics. Which school do I favor? E.g. Chicago, Keynesian, Austrian. Um, if I had to pick a descriptor for myself, it would probably be something like neo-Keynesian. Um, I mean, the, the sort of traditional Keynesian economics... Um, 
ran into some roadblocks in the 70s, and the Chicago School kind of got a lot of credibility for a while, but I feel like a lot of that credibility has been pretty much blown away by recent history. Um, and in the meantime, the Keynesians have kind of, you know, amended their theory to deal with, like, new evidence, which a lot of the economists on, on the more conservative side have not really been very good at. Um, and so they're definitely the most convincing bunch these days. Um, let's see, best Harry Potter book and best Harry Potter film. I actually think the best Harry Potter book is the first one. I reread all the Harry Potter books when the seventh book came out because I was like, I gotta reread. It's been a while. Um, and I really feel like the, the, the first one has the best writing. Um, you know, it's hard because later on, of course, we care about the characters more, but like, you know, I always felt a little bad for J.K. Rowling because she, you know, I mean, obviously, who can feel bad for J.K. Rowling? <laughs> but like, she, um, she worked amazingly hard on that first Harry Potter book and put in, you know, it's clear in the prose. Um, and then I feel like later in the series, it just starts to feel a little rushed and it's hard. You know, I think of her, you know, imagine her typing away and then standing behind her as an editor with a, a huge bag of money saying, you done yet? Are you done yet? How about now? Um, you know, it's, it's something I, I wonder about, you know, when you get really successful, there's always this, this, you know, all the pressure, um, gets hard. So I really like the first one. Uh, Movie-wise, uh, they definitely get better as it goes on. Probably the fourth movie is the best, I think, but, you know, it goes, it goes a little better. What do you think makes a good story? Um, that's a little vague. <laughs> uh, I mean, basically good characters and conflict uh, are the things that make a good story. My particular bugbear is agency. I like to have... Um, I like to have my characters be driving a story rather than be subject to it. That their decisions need to be the things that actually make the story move forward. Um, it's really easy to do a story where things just kind of happen to a character rather than having them actually, you know, make the choices. Especially in fantasy where there's always like prophecy and destiny, and sometimes it's like, oh, is this character just kind of belong for the ride? Uh, so I try to avoid that. That's, like, my thing. Um, without going too political, do you like Trump, think he is horrific, or somewhere between? Uh, I think he's horrific. Um, that's a pretty widespread opinion uh, in the places where I live. I live in Seattle. It's, like, a super liberal town. Um, so that's not a controversial opinion around here. Um, but no, and, you know, I don't think of myself as, like, particularly left-wing, but, like, I feel like things have gone a little crazy here. Um, uh, do you think the fantasy genre has shifted with the development of technology? Um, and if so, is this a positive thing? I feel like a lot of fantasy dystopian books have similar storylines sometimes. I mean, things obviously change with technology. I mean, the relationship between fantasy and science fiction changes. Science fiction in the 60s was this sort of, like, big, optimistic, you know, Star Trek-y thing, because it kind of felt like that might actually happen, like we're going to go out and colonize the universe. And now it feels like, oh, no, that's not realistic. And so science fiction is kind of like, it's more like neuromancer and cyberpunk and biotechnology and all this kind of, like, weird, disturbing stuff. Um, which is, like, a different kind of fiction. And so, like, fantasy, in reaction to that, like, obviously, modern technology doesn't play into most fantasy, but it changes. The big change in fantasy, though, I feel like fantasy lived in the shadow of Tolkien for, like, a really long time. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to disrespect Tolkien, but, like, people were just basically copying his stuff for, like, decades. Um, and we are finally getting to the point where people are like, oh, you know, you can have a fantasy that's not set in medieval Europe in the 12th century or whatever, you know. It doesn't have to be knights and castles. It can be other things. It can be, I mean, my fantasy has sort of muskets and sort of Napoleonic War stuff in it, but it's, um, it's not so much that specifically, but that it can be set in other times and places, or analogies to other times and places. So there could be Roman Empire, there could be, you know, ancient Mongol, there could be, you know, muskets, there can be World War One. there can be whatever you want, you know, all that you have all of history to draw from 
Um, and so I think we're seeing a lot of new fantasy books that are a little less in the kind of standard mold, um, which is which is a good thing for me. I really like this, obviously. Um, Jennifer asks, what advice would I give to students who want to be writers but have lost motivation? That's tough, because motivation is, is really hard. Um, I mean, you have to connect with what made you enjoy this in the first place. I would say the key is that you have to enjoy it. You know, nobody goes into writing to get rich, because if you do, it's a real bad plan. If you want to get rich, go be a merchant banker or something. Um, very few writers actually make any money, um, and, and almost nobody gets rich and famous. Um, you should do it because you like it. Um, and it's, it helps to have a realistic plan. You know, don't think I'm just going to publish my novel and then I'm just going to like live the, li the glamorous life of a novelist. Cause first of all, it's not all that glamorous. And second of all, it's hard. You know, it took me 10, 12 years to get to the point where I could be a full-time novelist. And, and that's lucky, you know, I'm lucky to be there. So I would say, you know, be realistic about your life plan and try to find, you know, a day job that's not going to, you know, break your soul, um, something that you can make a living at and that'll, uh, and then, but that also lets you write. Like, you know, I, at one point, I thought I wanted to be a computer game person, so I was going to go into game design. But then when I realized writing was really important to me, the problem with computer game design is that often people work really long hours, um, and I wouldn't have time to have a writing career and be a game designer. And so I, you know, I went to work for Microsoft in a pretty staid industry, part of that, that industry. Microsoft is huge and has a million different parts. Um, because it meant that I could go home at five o'clock and, you know, I had time to do the writing I needed to do. Um, and, you know, so you make trade-offs like that. But, like, getting a plan and, and having it be realistic have always helped me kind of maintain my motivation because then it's, it, everything feels a little more achievable. Neil asks, do you ever narrate your own audiobook and do you like audible.com? I love audible.com. I wouldn't narrate my own book because I'm, I'm not actually a great reader. Um, I tend to like skip words and fumble things. Um, I have a lot of respect for people who are good readers. Um, so, but all my books are available in audio. Um, I love that they are. I love the readings that people do. Um, I get to talk to the narrators, which is always super fun, and they ask questions, and I have to tell them how to pronounce all the ridiculous names that I made up. Um, but, and I love Audible. I, I go through a lot of audiobooks. Um, I paint miniatures, like sort of Games Workshop style miniatures, um, and I always have an audiobook on while I'm painting, so I go through a lot of books that way. Um, or exercising, or driving, blah, blah, blah. So between that and podcasts, it keeps me pretty busy. Kindle versus paperback. Um, it's hard because, like, I'm a pretty techie guy, but, like, I still do paperbacks. Um, you know, I still like just carrying around a regular book. Partly, I don't know, it's something about the screen. It doesn't quite work for me. Um, excuse me. If I traveled more, I would be more of a Kindle guy because, man, is it a pain to have to haul around five or six books if you're going to be somewhere for a long time. Um, but when it's just me here in the house, it's it's mostly um, hard copy books. Have I ever read any bizarro fiction? Probably. I read, um, I mean, I read the book of Fight Club and some other Chuck, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Palahuniak books. Um, I've read China Meville's books can be often uh, thought of as, as bizarro, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I like some of that stuff. It can be a little weird. Like, sometimes you get beyond having a point and get into just kind of like, look how weird I am, and that's not as interesting. But, like, China Meville, for example, it always feels like he has, he has a point that he's trying to make, so I really like... Um, I really like his books. Um, how regularly do you read? 
just for pleasure, not your own. I never read my own books like after they're published, like because like I'd always find something I want to change and then I couldn't change it. Um, I read all the time is the answer every day. Um, I go through a book maybe every three or four days probably. Um, I read fast, you know. I always have. Um, and they're always sending me books, so I have a big stack of books to get through. Um, and then I have audiobooks and, and all that stuff. So the answer is constantly. Um, about, I don't know, probably 75% fiction, science fiction or fantasy, and then 25% nonfiction, usually history or economics or something like that. Favorite book quote and why? I don't know how many quotes I could do off the top of my head. Um, it would probably have to be something from Terry Pratchett, um, probably something from Death in Terry Pratchett. There, he has so many, so many good bits. There's a whole conversation. I'm, I don't know if I can quote it verbatim, but in in Sorcery, where Death is talking to the sorcerer, and he just has all these wonderful snappy comebacks. The sorcerer asks, "What would humans be without love?" And Death says, "Rare," which is, ugh, I just love. His writing is so clever. All right, looks like we're wrapping up. So maybe last round of questions, which is good because my voice is going and I need to go get some lunch. You guys probably, I don't know, is it dinner time over there? Supper time, whatever you, you call it? I, um, it's funny looking at m the copies of my books that come out in the UK because they have to have someone go through and change all the spellings. So, you know, the price of valor turns into the price of valor with a U. Um, lunch today is probably ramen. There's a great ramen place I love to go to. Um, I love ramen. Uh, I'm a big, I have like a Japanese culture interest, so I watch a lot of anime and I study Japanese in school and I love Japanese food and other things, so today feels like a ramen day. <laughs> yes, as a student, as a student I ate a lot of very cheap food, like cheap ramen. Um, the classic food for college students here in the U.S. at least is like the bulk packs of Top Ramen, which you can get for about four cents each. And so we'd go out to the 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 bulk store and and load up, and then come back, and that would be another month of of food. I haven't eaten mac and cheese. Jen asked if I still read the instructions on the mac and cheese box. I haven't eaten mac and cheese in years. At least not like the box kind. I may have eaten it at restaurants. Um, these days, like at home, I eat like sandwiches, basically. That's like, it's boring, but like, I just, you know, I need something that's quick and easy for the most part, unless we're cooking like actual food. But like, if it's just me making food, then it's like, I've got turkey, I've got cheese, I've got, you know, condiments, I make a sandwich. All right, well, I feel like we've run out of questions and we're about at the right end of time. Jen, shall we call that a day? What's, what's the worst book I've ever read? I don't think I can answer that question. Someone might be mad at me. Um, no, I, first of all, there's a lot of really bad books, but, um, but no, um, I try, you know, Authors, we have, there's like a sort of certain Freemasonry among authors. You run into people at cons and stuff, and so you don't, you know, you just don't talk bad stuff about other people. You, everyone tries to stay nice. We're all in it together. Um, okay, last question. Can writing feel lonely if you're working from home so much? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, my girlfriend lives with me now, which is great, but she didn't when I started. Um, I have cats. I have two cats here, and they keep me company. Um, but when I quit, I told my friends, you know, if you come over to my house and I've acquired like another hundred cats and I've become the crazy cat guy, maybe you should stage an intervention or something. So uh, I try to go out and meet people for lunch. That's like my my remaining social and not becoming a crazy recluse. All right, guys, this has been super awesome, and uh, thank you so much for having me, um, and thank you for all the great questions, and I hope I wasn't, like, too awkward. Um, I am going to click the button to log off this, but um, thanks again to Campus Society and Jen for having me. Uh, oh, if you uh, are looking to get in touch with me, um, I am at Django Wexler on Twitter, just like my name. 
probably the best way to get in touch with me, or if you go to djangowexler.com, it's my website, and it's got links to all my books, and places you can buy them, and excerpts, and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you guys check that out, and um, enjoy. Uh, and, you know, feel free to, if you have any questions that you missed, feel free to, there's a contact on my website, or you can send it to me on Twitter, and I will definitely get back to you. All right, I'm going to click the button and log off.